Hey, what's up? Welcome. You are listening to TC the G Radio, Season 3, Episode 10. I am TC the G, broadcasting directly from Tijuana, Baja California. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are going to have a great time. The title of today's episode, Breastfeeding. Okay, so I decided to speak on breastfeeding today because it is very important for our children, right? It's very important for them to grow up healthy, to be strong, to develop a healthy brain. And breastfeeding, it seems like it's not very common nowadays. It's very, very rare um, to my experience, right? I don't really see it too often. I don't have too many friends that can say, or people that I know that can say, oh, I breastfed my baby. It's only, you know, a few people that I know that I can probably count on my, you know, count on my hand. So it's not too common and it should be. It should be because it's the natural way to feed our babies, right? That's the, that's the natural, it's just, you know, nature. So I have been breastfeeding my daughter since she was born. She's now a year and one month. And I'm going to continue to breastfeed her until her, two, you know, until she's two, which is, you know, the, that's the, that's the mark that they give you pretty much like two years old. Um, that's when they start growing their molars. And once they start growing the molars, they're supposed to be able to, to, you know, start eating regular food, like all the way. Right now, she only has her little front teeth, so she can't do too much chewing, you know, with the, of course, with the molars, because she doesn't have any, but she does all her little chewing whenever I give her, like, fruits or something. She does a little chewing with her little front teeth. She takes, like, really tiny little baby bites. So cute. So that's what she does at this point. So I want to, I guess you can say, advocate for breastfeeding. I want to encourage our young moms, our new moms, moms of all ages, just moms in general, to give it a try. Now, I'm not going to lie, it is difficult. It is difficult. When I first, uh, when I had my, my son, my first child, I was only 18. So I tried to give it a go at the, at the, um, when I had him at the hospital. You know, I was excited and, um, and I tried to give him some milk. Um, and I was struggling a, a little bit to make it happen, to make it work. I wasn't, I wasn't too sure how to do it. And nobody taught me, um, you know, there's no instruction from any female in my, in my, you know, my family. So when I was at the hospital, I do remember this incident when I was at the hospital, I was asking the nurse to help me, to help me, you know, feed the baby. I was asking her for guidance. I was like, how do you do this? You know, I, I'm trying to. Uh, do it, but I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. And I guess, you know, my boob wasn't the shape that she's used to, or like she was expecting some perky, super nice looking, juicy, freaking, I'm thinking like breast. Because when she saw mine, she was like, oh, that's not what breasts are supposed to look like. And she kind of like looked like she was kind of like disgusted or something. And my breast is not like perky or anything it looks like a like a regular breast you know there's nothing weird about it there's no weird nipple there's nothing weird about it it's just you know it was I guess you can say I had no bra I guess you can say it was kind of sagging because of course there's no bra and I'm just trying to feed the baby it's full of milk and like everything and I just thought to myself like wow you know I was kind of little I was a little like surprised and shocked that she would say something like that but I just like I kind of like just shrugged it off right I just I was like ah whatever and I kept trying myself you know but just the fact that she's a nurse and she's over there oh that's not what breasts are supposed to be like I don't think she's in the right line or in the right you know in the right work line of work I'm sorry the the right the right line of work if she's gonna have these kind of thoughts or if she's gonna be expressing herself that way um, because it might be discouraging to other people, right? I myself, you know, I'm strong-willed. I don't care. I know that I had to try to get my my kid this milk, and I really don't care what people think, like, about my breast or whatever, you know? I try my best to keep myself healthy, and I know I don't look that bad, you know? So, so yeah. 
So this nurse definitely should, you know, go have a different job because a job, uh, the a, a nurse's job is to help, is to uh, to I guess you can say to have a holistic view of health, right? Maybe she's not a holistic nurse. And maybe that's the issue. Maybe her, her nursing is so book-like that she doesn't have like the spirit, the soul that goes with it. You know what I mean? So I tried to give him milk. We were out of the hospital. I still tried to give him milk. It was hurting too much. And then I tried it for, a, I believe, like a week or two. And I started bleeding, you know? At the beginning, the babies don't drink too much milk. So it's not like, you know, I was like, um, it's not like I was trying to, uh, it's not like it was too much, hap like uh, too much work, I guess you can say. It's only a little bit, but during that time, it did become painful. And uh, maybe because my breasts were like not used to this new experience, I started bleeding. So I kind of like started seeing that there was like, um, I started pumping and I started seeing that there was like blood in the milk and it kind of like grossed me out a little bit and I was thinking like I don't think this is right to give my baby milk with blood you know so I kind of just stopped doing it I was just like again I had no guidance from anybody um, to help me figure out and I wasn't like on the internet like that either like researching and things like that I was just a brand new mom trying to figure it out and I did have some instruction though I do want to give credit to the WIC program they're the ones that insisted and were so proud that I was gonna breastfeed my baby they were you know whenever I would go to their classes when I was pregnant they would always bring it up you know you should breastfeed your baby is the best food for your baby so that I did get some guidance from them but, you know, when you're at home, you need, like, some guidance, maybe, like, hands-on and things like that. And maybe I could have reached out to them a little bit more or try to go to their office. But, again, I was barely at home with my brand-new baby. I actually had a C-section. So I was, like, the, few, the first few nights were, like, you can say hell because there was no help from anybody. I was – here I was with my C-section, no help. I had to get up feed the baby or change the baby again we this with the c-section zero help zero help from anybody I tried to have I tried to ask my my son's father to, to spend some time at the house so he can help me out but during that time he had another girlfriend so you know it never happened so I ended up you know again just I had to do my I had to do everything myself so after a while of trying to breastfeed, I just gave up. I gave up and I called my I called my homegirl Cynthia and I told her, hey, you know, like, how did you do this or like how do um, I knew that she had stopped giving her baby milk, and I told her how how does how do you stop or how do you know the process of stopping to give stopping of giving the baby milk? And she said you just need to take like warm showers and like eventually it will like go away, you know, like the milk will stop coming in. So I was transitioning to the formula. So, I started giving my baby formula, and that's that. The formula is so expensive, I would get some from the WIC, but it got to the point where I wasn't really getting money like that. You know, I, was, I had a baby, I, couldn't, I didn't really have a job like that yet. Um, so, you know, there was this one time even that I didn't have money for the milk. Again, there, there was no help. My mom helped me zero, nothing. She was there, but, you know, she, again, if you guys have heard my podcast before, she was pretty much not a mom. She was, like, not worried about being a mom. She was more worried about being a, you know, a, I guess a hooker, you can say. Even though she was already with a guy at that point, she was more worried about guys. You know, her thing is, like, guys and not her children. So, you know, and... Like I told you guys, she was a prostitute, so her, her her whole thing is that her life is that. Like it's hard when people say you can't make a whole a housewife. That's it's really true. It's really true. You know, you can't make them a housewife. 
that it is what it is that that's what they are that's what their mind is at their poison their their mind their heart their mind and their heart is poisoned maybe even possessed by some spirit who knows you know um but okay so i stopped giving my son milk i transitioned to formula there was there was this one day i had no formula no money I started crying, you know, because I felt like I couldn't feed my baby. And again, no help from anybody, from my mom or anything. Um, I ended up uh, talking to my, or calling my homegirl, Cynthia, and I asked her, you know, if she had some extra milk from her baby. Because I was crying, you know, I was crying. I was like, I felt like, you know, I needed food for my baby, and I had no food, nothing. So she ended up giving me some of her, her formula. And I still think about that, you know, and I thank her so much for that because... That was one of my lowest points of, you know, like feeling so like I couldn't do anything, you know, powerless. And just a can of formula really, you know, showed me or in that moment she showed me I saw God in her. You know what I mean? I saw a ray of hope. Um, just because she was so willing to just, you know, give me this formula and so I can feed my baby. And like at that point was like my baby, right? It's like, oh, I need to help my baby survive. So yeah, that's that guys. So I continued, you know, to give my son uh, formula until the appropriate time. And he started eating regular food after that. And, you know, he's good now. He's now 16 years old, big boy. Now, with my daughter, I just had her again last year in June. She, I really, really wanted to give it a shot at breastfeeding. Okay, like I really, really wanted to give it a shot. So I started breastfeeding. I didn't give up. Now, again, I don't want to lie about this because it's very important for the women out there to know because I didn't know this, right? Maybe it would have helped me with my first son if I would have known this information. But yes, the first two months of breastfeeding your baby, it's very painful. It's very painful because your body, your, you know, your breasts, they're going through a transition period where, you know, they're not used to being sucked on like this. I guess you can say kind of like funny to say like that, but they're not used to being used in that manner, right? To be given milk to babies. And there's like friction from the baby's mouth. There's, you know, it's it's like using a muscle, you know, you have to work it kind of, you can say like, if I'm making an example out of this. So during the first, you know, two months, it was very hard um, because there was like a lot of different things happening to the breast. Like they were like little, like almost like if it was like, um, almost like um you can say kind of like growing new skin like the nipple was become like even it would even become like like rash sometimes like they would be like um extra skin you can say i don't want to get too graphic okay but overall it's you go through it right you go through it for like two months a lot I would even cry sometimes because it would hurt so much like the baby was trying to feed and I was having like pain because again the breast is trying to get used is trying to get used to this new thing and the nipple is not in its best you know it's like shaft it's like red it's like um rashed and then the baby is trying to drink milk out of it so it's like it can get very painful and then your breasts, sometimes they get so full of milk that they're like, it's called engorged. So they're like super full and like you feel pressure and like, it gets to be a whole scenario, okay? For like the first two months. Now after the two months, everything's fine. Everything is flows. There's no more pain. There's no more anything. So you do, you do have to be a warrior for those two months, a, a, a real warrior. If you really want to give your kids that milk that nutrition and if you think about it you know that's our ancestors did that if they can do it why is it that nowadays we're so coward like 
to give our kids this, you know, to, to do the natural thing, to give them breast milk, which is what, which is kind of like, I guess you can say a little bit selfish on our side because that milk, again, is the best milk for the babies. It's like the best, it helps their brain grow versus this formula. Have you guys seen the, have you seen the ingredients in the formula? It's like the worst things, like the worst things for the babies. That's why they're always getting like constipated or cry, they cry and things like that because that food is not real food. It's like filled with oil and like, again, it's processed. It's not real milk, it's processed. And it, it freaking, it trips me out that the doctors say, don't give them like food, like watermelon or like juices when they're babies, yet, not juices like canned juices, okay? I mean like real fruit juice that you actually like, let's say a watermelon, you put it in the blender and now you have juice, right? Like juiced fruits, like real fruit juice. They're not, they don't want us to do that, yet they allow us to give them this milk, which is not natural whatsoever. There's like added things, chemicals, there's processes in there, processes in there that are not natural and they allow us or they encourage us to give them this milk and they even like give it to you for free at the um at the hospitals i remember they gave it to me for free when i first had elijah uh well when i first i can't have a many more than one time but when i had elijah they uh my son they actually gave me some little bottles for free so like kind of like to try it out i didn't give it to him then because again i was trying to breastfeed him but I may, I'm, they, I may have given him, you know, it's been so long. I may have given it to him when, during the times when I couldn't figure it out. But anyway, the point here is, is that they were giving it to us for free, right? It's, it, but yet they don't let us give them natural like fruits and things like that, which is probably more, that probably like makes more sense, right? It makes more sense to give them something that's natural, that's, yeah, that's natural, right? Okay, so after those two months again, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to flow. So I don't want to lie again that it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy during the first two months, but is it worth it? Yes, it's really worth it, especially when you don't have to clean all the bottles, get up in the middle of the night to make the bottle. You can just be in your bed and give your baby milk and go back right back to sleep. You do need again for the first two months. You're probably you're probably going you're probably going to need a lot of uh, little like towels because your milk leaks. A lot of like um, breastfeeding pads. They sell them at like Target. Um, my suegra she would bring them a lot for me during the beginning of um, when I was first breastfeeding the baby because you leak right and it goes through your clothes and it can be uncomfortable. So I, I thank her for that as well. You know she would always come through with the with the breastfeeding pads I, I didn't find them here in Mexico so well I mean you can get them like shipped but whenever I would go to like a regular store like how she has Target there's Walmart there's Walmart over here but they don't have the same they don't have them they don't have the breastfeeding pads and it makes me think you know they probably don't have them for the same reason that a lot of women are not breastfeeding right there's no demand for this there's not that much demand because not a lot of women are actually breastfeeding and it does make me a little bit sad you know because the kids deserve it the kids deserve to be to have the best nutrition to get a good start to their life with you know a good healthy body rich of nutrients with this milk that that we create that it's not that our body you know creates specifically for this baby it's like perfect it's a perfect machine our body makes this milk for the baby the baby grows and you know it, it makes them be, there's research that says you know even breast milk makes them you know helps them intellectually makes them smart so I believe Einstein also was breast breastfed until he was like two years old, exclusively. And I again, I I only breastfeed my baby. I don't give her any other kind of milk. 
yes, we're starting to introduce her, you know, little little foods like little fruits and things like that. But during the first year, she it was all milk, all milk, all milk, all milk. And I'm so happy and I'm so glad. So let me move on. I want to talk about also about breastfeeding positions because that is one of the things that I was a little bit confused when I first had the baby. Okay, Elanita. So when I was at the hospital, I breastfed her. I started breastfeeding her. Okay, let me first go through the breastfeeding positions. Why it is so, it could be, let me give you a reason as to why it is so overwhelming as a new mom, how to breastfeed your baby. First of all, because there's so many positions in which you can breastfeed your baby, supposedly, right? So the first one, I'm gonna go through it, is laid back breastfeeding or reclined position. There's the cradle hold, cross cradle hold, rugby ball hold or football hold, side lying position, laid back breastfeeding after a c-section upright breastfeeding or koala hold dangle feeding nursing in a sling double rugby ball hold or double football hold which is for twins dancer hand nursing position like really <laughs> really you you they make this process so much harder with all of these different different um positions you just like you just it, it, it gets you confused there should like tone it down to maybe two or three or maybe even you know it would be best if you just do one you know what i mean because as a mom you don't want to start thinking or being confused or this one that one like you're trying to you know it's like oh it becomes overwhelming and then the pain the breast the baby crying is like it's too much it's too much so when i started with the baby my instinct the first thing that I did was hold her in a football position. Okay, that's that is how I started feeding her in the football position. So I did that, but then after a while, it became too much as well. So I moved on to the dangle feeding because in that one, the dangle feeding, you're kind of like a kind of like a cow. The baby's like laying on the on the bed, and I'm just on the top, kind of like dangling my breast, and she like kind of like a little little becerrito you know like a little baby cow she kind of like but laying down she's like sucking up uh from you know from above her but that at, at the end of the day that one as well was a little bit, bit too overwhelming because then my my arms my arms were starting to hurt you know it becomes a little uh, like a freaking workout you know so i stopped doing that I did so much research, so much research. Like I, I didn't want to give up on breastfeeding. I really did not. So I did so much research and I came across this, um, this lady, Nancy Moore Backer. I'm thinking that's her name. I mean, I, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm thinking that's how you pronounce it, but her first name definitely is Nancy. Okay. This is like, um, um, I'm not sure if you can say, hold on, let me go back here. Okay, so it's like, a, it's like, a, it's a breastfeeding channel on YouTube. Her name is Nancy Moorbacker. I hope I am pronouncing it correctly, but she is, she was like my god at that point, okay, because she broke it down and there's like she has like different women breastfeeding and it was more like the natural way to breastfeed right the the laid back nursing is what she that's the that's the um that's the position that she pushes that's the only position she p pushes so that's what i was looking for i was looking for the top number one position that's really gonna work that's what i was looking for when i was doing all the research the, the one, you know, the one. And that is the one that she pushes, the laid back nursing, which is also called biological nursing. So that's like the main way to breastfeed the babies is the laid back nursing, which is also called biological nursing. And that one, you just laid back, you put the baby, you know, like you're like, um, 
lay back, not like flat lay back, but like, you know, you're like comfortable laying back a little bit and you can put pillows behind your back or like just get comfortable, relaxed, and you put the baby on your chest and then the baby starts doing its thing, you know? So everything works out the natural way, the biological way. So in that way, that was like my savior. When I when I started doing that, there was no more going back. There was no trying any other positions, nothing. That is the one, the laid back breastfeeding position. I have seen in a lot of, you know, during my research, I saw a lot of time, a lot of uh, people saying like, you actually have to hold your breast, your nipple and like squeeze it and like shove it down your baby's like mouth. So like the baby can get like the proper latch on your breast. But with that position, the baby naturally latches on to the breast. Why? It, it kind of like baffles my mind that we think we know how to do nature better than nature actually does. You know what I mean? It, this is like this human thing, this ego thing. The baby naturally, instinctually knows how to grab the breast. We don't need to like shove the breast on the baby's mouth because he's not latching or she's not latching correctly. The babies know how to do it. That's that's they know you know you don't see dogs grabbing their puppies and like here you know grabbing their nipples and throwing it in their mouth like nature knows nature knows what to do by instinct instinctually everything in the world all nature knows how to be whatever you know they are through their instincts we all know so the baby naturally instinct instinctly instinctually I'm sorry grabs the breast the right way we don't need to do no forcing or pushing I had a girl tell me one time like I was um I was breastfeeding my baby she came to visit and she was like oh no you're supposed to grab the breast and push it and and throw and you know the same thing that she said and I was like oh and and I, I just kept going you know I was like I was listening to her and I kept doing it, and she said it again. She was like, no, you're supposed to. I was like, I heard you. I told her, like like this, I, no, I heard you. You know, I heard you, but she's, she's it's working. It's fine. And she was like, well, I, I breast, like, I don't know how she said, like six kids or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, you know, it's fine. I mean, it's wor it's working for me. So, you know, like kind of like saying, it's okay. It's okay. I told her, it'll be fine. And yes, it was fine. I don't. I didn't need to shove my breast down my daughter's throat. You know, she grabbed it naturally. She did it, and she would always latch and you know, the right way. And nothing. You know, I didn't need to shove it down her throat. It was fine. I don't know. The girl that came to visit me. It maybe it worked for her. I, I can't say. You know what? Or maybe you know, her breasts are smaller than me, so she had to do a different thing. But my breasts are full. My baby just grabs it and she starts drinking milk. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's nothing to it. She just does her thing. I let her do her thing. I do sometimes like hold my breast up because they are pretty big and I just like position it for her to grab it. But I don't like shove it down her br her throat. You know, I just move it around so she can have it in her, so she can get it in her mouth, or I put it in her mouth or like around her mouth, like um, her lips, so she can grab it. But I don't like shove it, you know, that's the whole point here. I don't shove it. Another thing that I wanted to speak about was that I think another reason why people don't breastfeed or women don't breastfeed their babies is like the media, right? Like the pressure society the pressure society places on us as women to look a certain way. Like one of the things that I've that I have heard about breastfeeding is that your your boobs will sag, right? Like they're not gonna look nice. They're not gonna look perky. They're gonna sag because of the milk. When did it become so important for us to our looks over being a mother, over giving our babies breast milk? Why is that so important nowadays? Looks versus nurturing your baby. Nurturing your baby should be the utmost the highest priority to you not the way you look not the way your breast looks when you become a mother all selfish things sh should go out the window and if they don't then 
you still have a lot of mother growing up to do. You know what I mean? You cannot call yourself a mother if you're not thinking about the well-being of your baby for the best thing for your baby. And the best thing for your baby is this milk. And I'm not here to judge, right? I'm not judging. Everybody makes their mistakes. Everybody has to go through their path. I'm just speaking of how the media, how society has put these images out for us, like this body type, and that we work, worship it. We worship it so much to the point that we're willing to not, to, to not breastfeed our babies. We're willing to take that away from them. We're willing to not even try it just because of these society norms or these society, not norms, just because of these society pressures, t these society images or, you know, th the media, Hollywood, all of these things that brainwash us into acting a certain way. They're brainwashing us to not breastfeed our babies with these images. Oh, your body's not going to look good. Oh, your boobs are going to sag. That's brainwashing. Why don't it, why are they not giving us images instead of women breastfeeding and making it something glamorous or making it something, you know, amazing? Like they make everything else. Why do they have to demonize breastfeeding? Why? Why is that? Why did they demonize it? Because they don't want they don't want uh, our children to grow up healthy, right? There's an agenda. I, I do believe in the agenda, the agenda of you know seeing uh, seeing us as a number, right? As just a machine for them to work, and you know whatever juice us and then we die and then that's it right so they don't want us you know they make it very hard with these images when they they don't encourage us right to breastfeed the babies what they encourage us to do is not to breastfeed them so we don't have breasts that look saggy when I was in the hospital when I gave birth to my daughter it was a very sad day because during the nighttime actually not day because there was this lady that had her baby as well. You know, it's like a it's like a whole ward of, um, not a ward, it's like a whole top floor. It's the top floor of like all the women that just gave birth. It's like the birth, you know, floor. And there was this one lady with her baby and her baby just kept crying and crying and crying and crying during the night. And I asked the nurse, I was like, oh, what's wrong with the baby? You know, that baby, I, I feel so sad that the baby is just crying. And she said, oh, the, the lady, the girl, she doesn't want to give the baby milk. She said she wasn't going to do it. And I'm thinking she had a normal or like a regular baby, like a natural birth, because she was going to leave like the next day. When you have a C-section, they hold you longer. And for my daughter, I had another C-section, so I was actually there longer. But during the night, the baby was just crying and crying and crying, like she didn't want to give the baby milk. It was just so sad. I just felt so sad, you know, and I told her like, I told the, um, I told the nurse again when she came back again. I was like, I, I told her like, oh, se me hace muy cruel, you know, que no le esté dando, que no le de, que no le de comida, es, mm, y se me hace muy cruel, you know. And I wish I, I at that point, I kind of wish that I could have like, I, I didn't think about this. Maybe I could have told her, do you want me to give her the baby milk? I know I was still struggling with, you know, my baby. I was, you know, barely breastfeeding her and trying to learn. But I would have tried to give the baby some milk because honestly, I was just like, oh my goodness, the baby's hungry. The mom is just not giving him any milk. And here in Mexico, in El Seguro, in El Ims, they don't allow, they don't allow the, um, the, the formula milk. You're only supposed to breastfeed milk. They don't allow you to bring it in, that fake milk. They barely, and they also don't allow the, um, the chupones, like the pacifiers. They don't, they don't, they don't like that. They put like signs like not to give the babies that, that it should be regular, normal breast milk, the old fashioned deliciousness for the babies. 
And I love that about Mexico. I, I did love that. The only thing, like, the downside about that is that uh, maybe the baby sh would have been better off with the formula instead of crying all night, you know? So I just, like, I just wanted the baby to be taken care of, you know? Like, it was just so sad to hear the baby cry and be hungry, and the mom is just like, uh, you know, like, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, how can you be so cruel? Like, oh, my gosh, it's just... And these are the things, these are the type of um, people that the media makes us into. Hollywood makes us into without really realizing it. Realizing it. Those, are our, those are ideas that they are giving us and we digest them. We make them our own. They are like brainwashing us again. They brainwash us. Oh, your boobs are going to sag. Oh, your boobs are not going to look good. Like, who cares about your boobs? What you should care about now is this baby, this child. He or she needs your milk. They need you to do your job as a mother. To forget about yourself and love the baby, protect the baby, nurture the baby. That's what the babies need. So again, this is for all the women out there to encourage you to breastfeed your babies, to give it a go, encourage encourage people you know, let them know. Of course, there's a period where, you know, it's it's not it's not it's not easy during that 2 month period, but after that, you're good. You're sailing smooth. Everything's good. Again, you just have to be a warrior for those 2 months. And you can do it. Everybody can do it. You can do it. I believe in you guys. Don't give up. And yes, you can do it. You can do it. Just keep going. Time is going to keep going by. One day, another day. Time doesn't stop. Eventually, you're going to get to that two-month mark, and you're going to be good. You're going to be fine. You're going to be so thankful. You're going to be so proud of yourself for not giving up. And the bond it creates with you and your baby is just so beautiful. It's, it's so, so beautiful. I would not trade that experience for anything in the world. It's just, it's, it's so, so beautiful. It just, it, it reaches a different part of your, of, of you, of your heart, of your soul. It's just, again, there's no other word, there's no other word, but beautiful. Thank you so much for tuning in to TCDG Radio. I hope you enjoyed this episode. What are your thoughts on breastfeeding? Let me know. Comment, like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay in the loop. Remember to tune in to TCDG Radio Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also connect with me on social media to get more of me and my music. My social media and contact information are on the video's description. Again, thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in and for allowing me to share this time with you. Take care. Saludos.